how is what we see in America shocking? The only thing that should be shocking is the fact that Christians are shocked about what's happening in the world. The Bible is clear about what is going to happen in this world and with people, even those that profess to be Christian. Because many of us have become friendly with the world, and in many cases become friends with the world, well, we become shocked at those who we thought were our friends or those that would be allies or help us or those that seem to have commonality with us. We become shocked at the fact that they have turned to do exactly what they are supposed to do. That is to serve their Lord, to serve their master, to serve their God. That is the God of its heir. Many people are concerned and shocked and even bothered that Chick-fil-A just recently hired a uh, director of equity and inclusion. We don't know exactly what that's going to be. And does that mean it's going to lead to something to be supportive of the uh, LGBTQ community or something of that like? We don't know. Typically, those sort of positions don't tend to lend itself towards being more godly in their approach. But who knows? But the fact of the matter is we don't have any friends. We don't have any allies. Certainly, we don't have any in the government. I want to send a message to the entire community, especially to transgender children. You are loved. You are understood. And you belong. Obviously, we don't have any allies in, in our different public schools. And then even when we see Christians on the street who are proclaiming the gospel, something that is protected by our First Amendment right, our First Amendment right to free speech, rather than them being protected, we see them now being arrested. I want you to go to 128 And they're clapping. Brothers, man. Author. Oh. We don't have allies in corporate America with different corporations. Obviously, you know about what's happened with Bud Light and with Target and other companies as well that have not just gone woke, but they have just gone radical and satanic. You cannot turn on TV and watch any entertainers, even forgetting the fact that we have secular entertainers and artists who want to mock God. We even have those who are professed Christians who will do the same thing. In the cut for like three days. They thought it was sweet and started celebrating. How far on the edge are we going to go? I said we're going to do everything short of sin. Even our beloved sports teams, many of us have been forced to watch or look at or have to deal with our teams, the teams that we've grown up watching and cheering. These teams are now rooting for the enemy in promoting things such as Pride Night, uh, even going so far as to mocking, obviously, as a Protestant, we do not hold to a lot of what the Catholics believe, but the, the fact that they would go out and mock nuns uh, lets us know they're not far away from mocking anybody else. One thing we do know is they will never mock Islam. This shouldn't be shocking because even James says in chapter 4, verse 4, he says that you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, who wishes, wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. They are not our friends. If you want to be friends with them, well, then that's fine. You can do so. However, understand being friends with them makes you an enemy with God. Seeing what we're seeing is nothing uh, that should be shocking or alarming. Even Jesus himself said, speaking about how people's love, their hearts would grow cold. He said that in the last times, he says that lawlessness will increase and most people's love will grow cold. We see that now. Even disheartening as it is, it's to be expected we see that happening with professed Christians. And I don't mean just any Christians. I mean those who are leading churches. We see churches affirming what we know to be sin. As a matter of fact, we see more and more Christians moving away from the adherences of sound Christian doctrine. But then again, Paul did tell us the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. Well, that time is not only here, it's been here. The Bible tells us the type of characteristics that these people are going to uh, exhibit. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of all sorts of debauchery. The problem is how they come. They don't come in that way. They come seeming like they're part of our team. As, as the Bible says, they come just as their father does. They come as angels of light. We don't have a friend in secular society. We don't have a friend in the government. We don't have a friend in the school systems. We don't have a friend in Hollywood. We don't have a friend on Wall Street. We don't have anywhere 
we don't have friends anywhere except within ourselves. And then the Bible tells us that not every spirit is of God, so to test it. But even more so, not just test them and contend for the faith, as we're told to do by Jude, but not just test them, but also test yourself. What would be really shocking would be to find out that you thought that you were a believer and come to find out that you've always been a friend of the world. If the things of the world don't grieve you, if the things of God don't bother the people that you're closest with, there might be a problem. It might indicate that you are closer and more friendly with the world than you ought to be. That's why Paul says, Jesus concurs, examine yourself to make sure that you are of God. Many people will say they are, and they have even convinced themselves. The Bible says there are those who are deceived and who are being deceived. Well, I'm not sure what category a person might be in, but you don't want to be either one of the, the deceiver or the one that's being deceived. Examine yourself to make sure that you do have Christ. And one way to find out is, do the things of the world bother you? So that is not the be all to end all. That's not the final determination as to whether you do have a relationship with Christ. But those of us who do have a relationship with Christ, our spirit should be bothered by what we see. And we should be able to recognize that this world is not our world. This is not our home. And these are not our friends. And so, again, the only thing that should be shocking to people should be the number of professed Christians who they themselves are shocked. Maybe we're not reading our Bible enough to know that this was told to us it was going to happen. But just remember this one thing, guys. The only friend that we have as a body, he's in heaven. The world, they are not our friends. And it's just shocking to think that there are so many Christians who think the world is.